All right, let's kick it off. This is um, Libertarian Crusaders, or Crusade for Liberty. And today we have a special guest, Brandon. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, what organizations uh, you're with? <laughs> well, I'm a, like I was just telling uh, Kyle. Yeah, Cal. Yeah, Cal. Well, I do several different things, and I try to keep most of them separated. Uh, I'm a founding member of an organization here in Virginia, Right to Bear Arms, Richmond. Which we had 10 founders, and we lost four tragically in a car accident a few years ago when a head-on collision with a semi. Then uh, one of our members moved away to Georgia, so there's five of us left. And we organize what we call Freedom Walks, which we did today, which, where I met Cal and all those other members. Great group of people. And we, we do education through open carry of firearms. We engage people who engage us. We don't just go and get in people's face because that really doesn't accomplish anything. People who want to be engaged and want the knowledge, they come to us and we have no issue explaining what we do, what your rights are, and we educate people. We educate law enforcement. After the walk, I had a police officer pull up to my car. Um, talked to her for probably about a good 10, Today? 15. Yes. Yeah, I saw it as I, we were pulling and, out. And, wow. and uh, I was talking to her and she was like, I'm glad y'all out here doing what you're doing and educating her on what some of the gun laws are that she did not know. Mm -hmm. uh, last week at the General Assembly at the special session, I was carrying my rifle, went into the building. In order to carry a firearm concealed or open in the General Assembly building, you got to have a concealed carry permit. There's a, it is required. You didn't show me your Bill of Rights. So he says right here, shall not be infringed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you go like this. <laughs> I agree. But we have a, a law here in the Commonwealth, and that law states that there are 11 localities mainly uh, large population centers, Richmond being one of them, for the carry of a long, a long gun, whether it be a shotgun, rifle, that if you have a concealed handgun permit, you're exempted from that law. And that law states you cannot carry a rifle or shotgun with more than 20 rounds of ammunition loaded or have a threaded barrel, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But if you have a concealed handgun permit, you are exempt, the General Assembly has exempted you from that law. So when I tried to enter the General Assembly with a loaded AR-15, they said, you can't carry that weapon loaded. First I created and said, no, it's not a weapon. This is a firearm. Civilians, we have firearms, we don't have weapons. The government has weapons. Uh, <laughs> this is not my assault rifle, it's my assault musket. Actually, there's, <laughs> yeah. I, can, I cannot own an assault rifle. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, right. I don't have the proper licenses to own an assault rifle. NFA license. That's right. I own a modern sporting rifle. My AR-15 is not an assault rifle. It is a semi-automatic rifle. It fires one round with the depression of the trigger. But going back to what I was saying, that the, they had to bring down the first sergeant from the Capitol Police. And I showed them black and white what the law is. I said, look, I can carry this weapon just like it is. Here's my concealed permit. Here's my identification. And the law straight sh exempts me from that regulation. It's weird that like us pro gunners have to be like legal aid or. <laughs> right, you have to be up. so knowledgeable about right. your, your rights. Otherwise, they'll just trample right over you. Oh, and all they right. will. And they have no problem doing it. And what I tell people all the time, if you don't know your rights and you don't know what they are and you don't know the law, how are you going to safely and legally execute the rights that you have. Now, I have some questions about, like, uh, it seems like you know all about Virginia laws. Yes. Um, now, how would you uh, properly, if you don't have a permit, I don't want to get one because I don't like the idea of getting pulled over, having pulled over in, like, forever. But if I do, like, they'll register as, like, oh, it's Cal Mullinay. He's got, he's got a gun. And, you know, maybe take extra precautions around me. And uh, I feel that like having that permit, with not having it, removes that, right? Well, how would I transport it that my gun around not having a Here permit? in the Commonwealth, you can carry your gun openly without any kind of permit whatsoever. Open carry meaning you can see... From three the, sides, correct? Exactly. <clears throat> what do you mean by three sides? Visible from three sides. Yes. So, like, from the front of me, you could see this on, the, on my side. From the back of me, you could see it on the side. And from this side. Correct. But from this side, it's obviously obscured by my body. And all they need to see, they don't even need to see the whole firearm. All they got to really see is a hand grip. Right. So grip. inside the waistband is fine. Yes. Yeah. And you do not need a permit to do that. You can carry, without a permit, you can put that gun in your glove box. 
If you got a little center console, you can put it in a center console, and it's still perfectly legal yeah. without a permit here in Virginia. Because Attorney General Ken Cuccinelli at the time made the last ruling on this. He was the last one of our Attorney General to make a ruling. And it states, you can carry, and he stated, by Virginia law, we can carry it in a closed compartment. That doesn't mean it has to be a locked compartment, just closed legally without a concealed carry permit. So cloud box is okay. Absolutely. The Your center console is center okay. Center okay. If you like on my Jeep, I have a little spot right in front of my steering wheel off to the left, kind of about where my knee would go. Mm -hmm. I carry a, a, a 25 inside of it. Mm -hmm. uh, That's my little go-to last resort. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, that, where you put your sunglasses and you can put like a small gun there. No, there's not a closed container. Yeah. I mean, you kind of pop it down you know you can pop it up close up into the ceiling no the it was, it was quite specific. <laughs> a, <bit> a, <laughs> a, a closed compartment right 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 now what about if you carry um like a box a compartment in your car like a, a case would that count as a closed compartment it, yes you can actually transport a gun in your car any in a case if it's a a gun case it does not matter right. where it is okay how and about still the, perfectly legal how about the trunk trunk's legal it's a closed compartment right any closed compartment Okay. Now, with a long gun, on the other hand, your handgun you carry loaded All right. when you're transporting it in a vehicle. A long gun, whether it's a rifle or a shotgun, cannot be loaded at all. No magazine, no ammo. Does the magazine, or sorry, does the action also have to be open? No. Okay. It just cannot have any ammunition or magazine in the firearm while a long gun is being transported in the state of Virginia. And that's a hunting regulation that's actually enforced across the board. Because they don't want people shooting things From the out their window. Yeah. Like, oh, that's oh, really, like, I thought this was America. There's poaching <laughs> laws, and you know those are the king's laws. Uh, <laughs> but so you can carry your long guns, uh, like just throw them in the back seat of your car, and that's fine as long as it ain't loaded. Okay. I, matter of fact, that's where it is right now. Sitting in the back of my car, unloaded. So you put like a little gun rack right behind the driver's side. As long no, as I don't have a gun rack. Uh, it sits in the back. It either sits in the back seat or it sits across my trunk. A gun rack's kind of advertisement. Please break my windows. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> and with the other stuff I got on my vehicle, I don't want to advertise it any more than I have. True. Mm. Transporting. And that's a four thousand dollar gun when I put the optic on it. Like, oh wow! Right. Transporting can be. I've heard horror stories of uh, this guy in Jersey, New Jersey, who was moving and he was transporting a bunch of stuff, including firearms and ammo, and uh, to a place in northern Jersey. And he got pulled over by a police officer and then ended up getting, um, they searched through his entire car and he ended up with like 15 years in jail somehow. And uh, it was just th this entire nightmare where if he had been in Virginia at the time, it would have been, like you say, nothing illegal. Exactly. Now, for those of you who cross the border into the communist state of Maryland, <laughs> I'm going to warn you, if you have a concealed handgun permit, there is a law that we've been trying to get changed to disallow any state that does not have reciprocity with Virginia not to have access to our handgun registry, handgun permit registry. Database? Database, yes. So the Maryland cops can see immediately yes. the Virginia database. So what they do in Maryland, their highway patrol and their little local police right on the border, they see Virginia tags and they run the tag. Look and if you come, it. and if you wow. come back with a handgun permit, they'll pull you over, and that gives them reasonable suspicion to search your vehicle. Yes, by mm -hmm. saying you have and, a handgun permit. Yes. Wow. And you're in their imaginary boundaries. Yeah, exactly. Wow. I didn't know. And that. what they'll do, they'll pull you over, they'll search your vehicle, and if you have that firearm and any other than a lock case, you're gone. You're gone. There is a lady from Pennsylvania <sighs> with her two kids. She was traveling from Pennsylvania south to South Carolina, but she had to cross through Maryland into Virginia. So she was going down the interstate. They stopped her. And she told the officer, I have a seal permit. I have a gun in my purse. She ended up losing custody of her children. She spent a couple, well, I think it was two or three weeks in a Maryland jail. And it was a big mess. And all she was doing was going on vacation with her two kids. Making sure that they were protected. Yes. Right. right. Like any mother. Yeah. Right. 
See, that's where this, uh, this whole Storm Era 51 should be redirected <laughs> at uh, liberating women like her. Uh, they can't stop us all. I mean, there was this case, I think, like in Atlanta, in which uh, uh, people, civilians, ex-military veterans, uh, came and actually there was some kind of weird uh, ballot box uh, criminalcy that was kind of happening. And they went there and they overturned everything. Have you ever heard of this? It's like um, the siege of uh, some at town in Georgia. And they had a crossfire with the cops, too, trying to free some of these prisoners. Hmm. Uh, that's probably, I've never heard of that one. Yeah, that's, that's probably why, yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's, it's the only time I've ever heard in history where, like, the, the whole hand of the government didn't really come down on, on anybody. Uh, they just kind of, once they got the prisoners out, the cops were, you know, they didn't want to die, and they just kind of let it go, and that was the end of that. Uh, it happened, like, hmm. maybe in the 40s or 50s, uh, like, coming right out of World War One or... Or in just, was that uh, in Tennessee by any chance? Not th- I think it was uh, oh. somewhere near Atlanta, somewhere down south. Oh, okay, down south. Hmm. It wouldn't happen in a Yankee state, <laughs> right? No. Yeah. Um, so, what do you think about uh, the way that people open carry? We had we had a cop approach us, right? She was saying, or he was saying that. Uh, with a pistol, it can't be loaded. No, no, he was talking about the, the long right. guns. Oh, he was talking about the long guns. Yes, okay. and if, if you notice, I quickly corrected him in, with the law. Right, because he was trying to say none of them could be loaded. Yes, he, he said, you got your clips out. <laughs> right. And <laughs> everything's easy. unloaded. I was like, no. If you have a handgun, sealed handgun permit, you're exempted from that law. And he was kind of... I was kind of shocked I knew that, but it's by expression on its face. Yeah. So if you have a permit uh, and you're carrying a long gun, then you can k- keep magazine it? Then Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, when we were carrying, I had one in the chamber. Right. Nice. And if you don't have a permit and you're carrying a long gun, you're not supposed to have a magazine in it? If it has a threaded barrel, or no. Right. But if it has, every pistol pretty much got it. Is, is that a weird distinction? <laughs> it's on a long gun. Okay. Okay. So if it has a threaded barrel, if it can insert... A magazine of more than 20 rounds. Mm-hmm. That's it right there is the uh, 20 rounds, I think. Yeah. Mm. You could get like a, a 1022, uh, mm-hmm. Ruger 1022, and you could get a 10 rounder. You could probably. I, I love the 1022. Right, it's great. My wallet could you, take about six that, and 18. Would you be able to. I've got a Marlin 1022. Beautiful gun. Yeah. Hmm. Woodstock. Can't yeah. go wrong. So, uh, with no permit. Uh, with a handgun, you can walk around and keep it loaded. Yes. Okay, that's good. Your handgun, it can be loaded all the time. All right. And as long as you open carry it without a permit, you're fine. If you've got a steel permit, you carry it however the hell you want to carry it. Now, um, there's some places where you can carry. Correct. Uh, right. Now, what are some of those places? All right. Currently, federal installations, military bases, you cannot carry a firearm onto an installation. By entering an installation, there's a sign right there at the gate. By entering the installation, you waive your right to consent for search. So if you don't want to be searched and give up that right, don't enter the military installation. Ahead. Yeah. Because if they do stop and search you and find that firearm on you, that is now a federal offense. Now, um, federal parks, national parks and whatnot. You can carry a firearm in national parks, but you cannot carry the firearm into any of the facilities at the park. So like the structures. Like right? the nature center. Like the visitor center and okay. nature centers and those things. You, you can't carry your firearm. You've got to leave it in the vehicle. Mm-hmm. But you can actually carry it on the park. But if you enter a building, you need, it, it, you're not allowed to bring firearm. What if you're at like Shenandoah and you, you just step into the restroom? You know, is that, does that I don't count? think they'll say anything about the restroom, but if you went into the, I go to Shenandoah all the time. I love, yeah. the, uh, I, 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 I love Shenandoah. And uh, I go up there camping quite frequently, actually. It was at, like Big Meadows uh, right, Visitor yeah. Center. You could not bring your firearm. Okay. Like, what about these kind of, you know, sometimes they have like these, like, well, this is what a house used to look like, a log cabin. Uh, you can't walk inside one of those either? If it's a federal building. A federal no. building. Okay. Now, the post office. Again, it's a federal building. You cannot carry a firearm to the post office. You cannot carry a firearm into the courthouse. You can carry a firearm into the police station. I do it frequently. And they won't even blink an eye at you. There was some case that happened some Midwest where some guys were... Michigan. Michigan. They did a, a, 
a Second Amendment audit on their police station, and they walked in. Actually, <laughs> those, those individuals are actually friends of mine. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do you know about that? When, when our four members were going and got killed, that's who they were going to see. Really? They're actually, oh, no they, they come James, to, yes. James Baker, I think. Yes, James maybe Baker. One of them. Yes, uh, fan. He's a friend of mine. Awesome. I know James very well. He comes down here to Virginia and walks with us sometimes. So what happened there at the station? Uh, they found out that there's no Second Amendment there, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Michigan has different laws than Virginia. Right. And I'm not familiar with all of Michigan's laws, but James is, and he was being a smart ass, and that's why they did that. All right. They and I told him he was a dumbass when he was going to go do it in the first place. But he's out now, I imagine, right? Oh, no. Yeah. They, he didn't. Was it, uh, it went, didn't go over very well, but there was really nothing that came out of it. Right. Other than... A cool you're, video. You're, uh, you're, here's your sign. Right. As Jeff Foxworthy would say. <laughs> <laughs> so you're actually going to police stations and well, you never get any problems? No. Cool. Um, now, go, Governor Northam, before him, Governor, Governor McAuffle. <laughs> I like that one. Governor McAuffle signed his executive order what says now you cannot no longer carry a firearm into any state owned building meaning dmvs abc stores uh you think guns and liquor will go well together well i've ca- before that executive war was signed you could carry your gun into an abc store and buy all the liquor you wanted to buy right you're not drinking it inside the abc <laughs> store. But under, his, right. under his executive order now all state buildings are firearms free yes gun free murder zones as i like to refer right. to them as target rich environments so here in richmond if you went downtown and you had to go to the Say the Department of Elections. You cannot carry your firearm in the Department of Elections anymore. Because it's a state-owned building. Wait, did you hmm. say this is a law that got passed? It's an executive order. An executive order. Now, when McAuffle left office and the people elected Mr. Blackface Racist, uh, <laughs> Governor Northam. Baby killer. Yes, yeah. that too. Yeah. Absolutely. It bloods all over his hands, body. Yeah. But He's an he infant re- neurosurgeon. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sure but he renewed things. McAuffle's executive order. He renewed it? Yes, he did. So how would you get rid of that? This is how we get rid of it. We have to talk to our legislators. They can override that executive order in the House of Delegates in the Virginia State Senate. Lobby your legislator. Talk to them. Don't email them. Go to their office. Do, or do like I do. I go knock on their door. You know where they live? Sure I do. <laughs> matter of fact, my delegate lives about a block and a half from me in Hopewell. I mean, another thing I do, I'm the chairman of the Republican Party for the city of Hopewell. Get to know your people of your political parties, whether it be Democrat and Republican. Know who they are. I think the lobby day was a really good uh, show of force. Yes, it was. Because uh, early, early in the morning when I arrived, I, was like, I saw all these anti-gunners being busted in. I was like... Where did all these people come from? Uh, and I was like, where are all the pro-gunners? They were inside already. We uh, were inside the building <laughs> lobbying our legislators. It's, it's, it's a great show of force when they go in there and all the pro-gunners are in there with the stickers on. They occupied it before all the anti-gunners can get in there. And that was our plan. Yeah. <laughs> because our organization, Right to Bear Arms Richmond, worked hand-in-hand with another organization, Virginia Citizens Defense League, or known as VCDL, and... I'm a member of VCDL. I've been for many years. I know their president very well. I know their executive committee. And we work very well with them hand in hand on a lot of events. On that special session lobby day, Phil Van Cleve with VCDL, the, VCDL headed up the legislative side of the event. And my, our organization, Right to Bear Arms Richmond, we, ended up, we headed up the uh, the rally portion and the political show of force kind of getting people in the building. So it was a hand-in-hand effort by the, both organizations yeah. working together. Yeah. And we work hand-in-hand frequently. Uh, I think it's uh, like here in Richmond, there's a lot of uh, pro-gunners. There's, uh, there was one guy who came up in front of us to reveal he was, uh, had a concealed <laughs> yeah. yeah. his back when he looked at the shirt. Sure. For a minute, I thought he was going to moon us. For a <laughs> <time>. I swear. <laughs> yeah, you like, did say that. <laughs> he turned around and was like, oh. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. The odds of that happening, though, people walking up to you and saying, all right, yeah. It, it's, it, from where I'm from, it's like 
DC area, it's just a totally different story. It's, it's like well, a totally it, different it, place. And, and like I told, uh, I forget who I was talking to this morning. Um, someone asked me, what kind of reactions do we get? And I said, it's mixed. You're going to have people who, who are for you, and you're going to have people who are against you. And you're going to get both kind of reactions. It's depend- and same thing with law enforcement. You're going to either have a good reaction with law enforcement, depending on the officer that responds, or you're going to have a negative reaction by the officer who responds based off of their pre-thoughts of what the law is, and most of them don't know the law anyway. Or on what side of the bed they woke up on, just with anybody. You know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you might come across somebody who's having a bad day. And, and like I tell people, one thing, the first thing I said this morning, all, all y'all can verify, I said, look, law enforcement interaction, comply, comply, comply. If they're wrong, we'll see them in court. Don't give them a hard time. Yeah, if you're dead, point. you have no recourse. If right. you comply with the officer... You show them what the law is. You talk to them normal. And if they want to be stupid. And Sue them for everything and use the money to buy more guns. <laughs> again, if they want to be stupid and think their badge allows them to circumvent the law, because a lot of them are like that, then we'll see them in court. I think that the people that they approach, that they know they're armed, they're less likely to have a bad attitude. <laughs> no, I can tell you, I've had... At three law enforcement agencies across the Commonwealth, put guns in my face simply for me exercising my Second Amendment right of carrying a firearm. When was this? Well, the city of Hopewell did it in Hopewell. Wow. They did it in 2013 when they learned the hard way when I took them into federal court (laughs) and I sued on the first, second, fourth, fifth, and 14th Amendment violations and I cleaned their clock in federal court. Wow. The city of Williamsburg did a felony takedown on me for simply carrying a firearm, talking on my telephone, walking down the street. Well, that's distracting. You're like walking. carrying while, <laughs> yeah, carrying while talking. On I hear, you can't do I'm that. hard of hearing. Um, a lot of gun sh- gunfire made me hard of hearing over the years. So the, I, this cop was hollering at me, and I, I was on the telephone, not paying attention to you know, and he was behind me. Next thing I, when I did hear him, and I turned around, when I heard him say. On, on you on the phone, he said a lot enough for me to finally hear because he did not speaker in the car. Because he, I guess when he was giving me voice commands verbally, I was, you know, I wasn't hearing them for whatever reason. And then when I turn around, I've got two officers pointing their Glocks at me. For simply walking down the street, well, carrying a firearm. Wow. Then I was in the the city of Alexandria, and we had to educate them. When, one of their police officers wanted to pull a gun at me for simply carrying a firearm. That's oh, nuts. That's wild. You survived three times. So you got like what, six more lives left. Well, <laughs> and again, when an officer gives me a command, I comply, comply, comply. Right. A lot of times, if it wasn't so hot today, I would have, been had, I would have had my vest on. Mm-hmm. I, I do wear a vest frequently when I do things in, the, in certain jurisdictions. In Richmond's one of them I would normally wear a vest in. Yeah, I'm not interested in being a martyr. I've got, uh, I've got a plans with my girlfriend to have seven kids. I've got to make sure all of them come out first. Uh, <laughs> then you can be a martyr. Yeah, yeah. When I'm maybe 60, 80 or something like that, uh, revolutionary times, like, I live a good life. Uh, let's do good with guys. The one thing we do with, my, with, the, with our organization, before we do an event, there's a few things that happen. Myself or one of our other uh, uh, organizational leaders, one of our founders, we'll do what we call a recon after we choose the location. This time, one of our other members, normally I'd do them, but since we had a member right here, he said he would do it. He put us in the wrong spot initially. We kind of yeah. faced the cow and did a quick correction and had a better location on Cary Street. But uh, we do a recon. Mm-hmm. We look at what we're, where we're gonna walk. We work with the local law enforcement. We inform them of what we're doing and who we are when we're doing it. Then we execute the event. And by doing that, we have very few problems law enforcement wise. But there are still occasions like in, Char- in Charlottesville in April. I was ass- physically assaulted by an uh, insane snowflake. Who, <laughs> she melted down and decided she wanted to body check me right in front of the police officer on camera. And I demanded that she be arrested, and the police officer actually would not arrest her. After he witnessed the assault. All right. So. 
Yeah, no, it's unfortunate. Uh, Charlottesville, it's turning to Virginia's California. And, yes. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it's becoming like an international city, right? I mean, you got attracts a lot of people through UVA. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. Uh, Charlottesville always in the best. Right. Beautiful city, <laughs> downtown and everything, the architecture, I love it. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's just weird how weird populations that are not, I guess, culture-wise. They're not the uh, six Semper Tyrannus uh, Virginians. <laughs> Uh, they're more like, oh, there's a gun Left there. all tyrants. Right, yeah. Uh, except for their own. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of weird. I think it's uh, these people are thinking, well, give a chance for what it's like out in the countryside. I don't know. A lot of this maybe D.C. liberals coming out here and just kind of changing the culture a bit. Out well, there. It's not, it, what it is, whenever we get people elected into Washington, into Congress, in the Senate, from whatever state they're from, they bring staff with them. And then those people end up becoming a part of the political machine in their liberal ways yeah. and move into Northern Virginia because it's cheaper than living in D.C. or they move into Southern Maryland. There it is, yeah. And, of course, they're bringing all their liberal ideas from California and New York and these other areas they're coming from and implanting themselves into Virginia politics. And they're funded by government. And they're funded by government and, and funded by Soros. Yeah. And they, a lot of them will get funded by Soros. They don't learn anything from the place that they came. Like no. They left the place that they came because it was such a dump, and then they bring all those same values to yes. turn this new place into a dump. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Intrastate <laughs> yeah. uh, immigration is another thing to be worried about. Right. <laughs> right. It's, right. it's right. even worse. Yeah. <laughs> Here in the Commonwealth over the, last, over the last 10 years, starting with Barack Obama's run for office the first time, the Democrats were smart. They registered hundreds of thousands of new Democrat voters across the Commonwealth over the last 10 years. Republicans, for whatever reason, are now playing catch up. And if we want to keep our conservative values, we can't keep electing these liberals who want to take those away from you. Am I saying every Republican is a good Republican? Hell no. Not at all. Because some of them are pieces of trash, and I've told them that publicly. You know where they state. live. And I know where they live. <laughs> and they know I have no problem coming and knocking on their door. <laughs> or picking up my phone and calling them on their cell phone. Right. <laughs> but you're going to get politicians, especially the liberals, who want to take away the rights that you were granted by your creator. The rights that our Constitution has guaranteed, not granted, but guaranteed, those inalienable rights. So if you keep electing these people, you're just asking them to take your rights away. There is one right that is the only amendment that says, shall not be infringed. Absolutely. Right. Now, I got a, something interesting about that amendment. Most people forget about this part of the amendment. What's that? And... When someone's asked this question, which I'm about to pose to you, you may not have an answer. But then I'm going to show you Thanks. the answer. Okay. All right, here nice. we go. I, I hate these new books. They're hard to get through. The papers are glued together almost. Yeah. There we go. A, this is the part most people don't understand of the Second Amendment. A well-regulated militia being necessary, necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. People like to say, well, it says a militia. Are you a militia member? I can carry one easily. <laughs> well, no, I'm, not, I'm just yeah, I, I think we are. Yeah, liberate. Well, uh, for for argument's sake, no, not technically. No, I'm not, not a okay. militia member. You know what? Every one of you, every American, is a militia member. Able-bodied, right? Have anybody oh. know the definition of a minute man? Ready What's in a minute. Ready in a minute. That is a militia. When our country was formed, that yeah. was the militia. Every able-bodied male. Women, too. And women. Yeah. Right. Yes, absolutely. So when people say, well, regulated militia, you are the militia. 
You are that minute man. Well, ready regulated to, means ready to go. That's right. Totally regulated <laughs> by government, right? That now, Thomas what? Jefferson. <laughs> Thomas Jefferson once said, there's a difference between a militia and a standing army. A militia meets once or twice a year, if that. And they're a regulated, well-regulated militia. Does a minute man have to actually go to formal training? According to General Thomas Jefferson, no. You don't need formal military training to be in a militia. You just have to be ready at a moment's notice to defend your neighborhood, to defend your county, your city, your state, your country. So, yes, everybody in this country is a member of the militia. Hasn't it always been that uh, professional armies, all through history, isn't it professional armies getting schooled by just ragtag teams yes. getting thrown together? I think that's absolutely. like the story of history almost. <laughs> You're absolutely correct. Because people's going to, the left like to use that. You're not a member of a militia. But you are. Hmm. Yeah. Every, uh, every able-bodied American is a member of a militia. We have this festival, Anarchon. We all do go out there to shoot. I guess that is our militia yeah. coming together. Movement. Absolutely. Yeah. That's a good point. Um, I guess it's weird that sometimes they want to use like uh, the way they describe things back then. They talk or the way they would define things. Nowadays, they want to kind of define it differently. I've, it, yes. I've seen I'm your, glad you said that. I've seen uh, textbooks in like high school just redefine what the Second Amendment well is. Well-regulated is the right. key yes. problem. Right. And. When you're looking at the Constitution, you cannot look at it in the meanings of the words today. You have to look at it in the meanings of the words in 1779 when the Constitution was ratified, was wrote, ratified, and accepted. Well, if we were to keep <clears throat> their sort of logic, and if we were try to try to read Shakespeare today, it'd be like reading a completely <laughs> fucking different language, right? Yes. So, yeah, there's either... Uh, like, they fail to see the bigger picture a lot of times. They don't like to dig deep into things. No. The, the, so the, we, we address the first line of the Second Amendment, a well-regulated militia. Now, the second clause of that sentence, being necessary, necessary to the security of a free state. What does that mean? Uh, in order to prevent... I guess the possibility of tyranny, you have to have... That's a, exactly what it means. Right. Is to put down a tyrannical government. If our government became a tyrannical government, it's for the... We have the means. the people to give them the means to resist tyranny. That's your right to self-defense. That's what that clause is. In a free state, the state that they're referring to, is, not the federal government. No, right. Right. <laughs> they're referring to... The individual Virginia, states, right? There California, was, Georgia, all fifty states. That is the states they're referring nothing to. Nothing in there they're ever talking about a federal government. Even when they write United States, the letter U is uh, lowercase. They're talking about the states themselves, and the event that our own states have become tyrannical. Six semper tyrannis to better continue our path towards liberty, in which it was for us all tyrants, right? Here in Virginia, yeah, that's our motto: death to all tyrants. Great motto. Uh, compared to like Vermont, we love cheese, I guess. Uh, I think it's a good cultural... And Volvos. I think they love cheese and Volvos. All right. right. Banner. Now, now the next clause of the Second Amendment. The right of the people to keep and bear arms. Who's the people? <laughs> we are. And the most powerful statement that everybody knows... It shall not be Shall infringed. not be infringed. Now, does anybody know contract law? There's, uh, I believe, seven proponents to that. Okay. In, yeah. co in contract law, Constitution is a contract. It's a contract with the, the many states to the federal government. The word shall in a contract, anybody know what that means in a contract? Uh, it has to be done, right? Like, yeah, must. It can change. Right. Yes. The word will means you got wiggle room and you can change things. It's inconceivable. But the word okay. shall... It means it stone. must happen. So, so shall not be infringed. When the federal government comes down and says, you got to go through a background check. Guess what? You just infringed on my right. Now, there's another interesting amendment. Who knows about the Fifth Amendment? 
Uh, don't infringe on thyself. Self-incrimination, right? Yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> but there's another part of the Fifth Amendment people are not familiar with. What's that? The second part of the Fifth Amendment. All right, let's read it. No person shall be held to answer for a capital or otherwise infamous crime unless on a <clears throat> permanent or indictment of a grand jury, except in the case of <clears throat> arising in the land of naval forces or in the militia. And that's talking about military law. Your military is not subject to the civilian law, they have subject to the military law. When in actual service of wartime or public danger, nor shall a person be subject for the same offense twice, double jeopardy, or put in jeopardy of life or limb, nor shall be compelled in a criminal case to be a witness against himself. That's a part of the Fifth Amendment everybody knows, right? Self-incrimination, right. double jeopardy. Right. Here's the part people don't know because they don't go into it. Nor be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. Nor shall private property be taken for public use without just compensation, which is intimate domain. domain. Right. Yeah. Now, or part, civil asset forfeiture. Yes. <laughs> it's unconstitutional. Right. Now, that, that part about life, deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process. Are you a law abiding citizen, Cole? Cow. Cow. Yeah. Um, Gentlemen, are y'all law abiding citizens? Of course. Have but. you had your due process? Have you sat in front of a uh, judge and jury and been convicted of a crime? Nope. I have. So been. how can the federal <laughs> government impose putting a regulation that you got to have a background check? They can't because you have not had your due process. You, they cannot take your liberty from you so until you've is, had due process of law under the Constitution. When I have discussions with people on the street, this is one thing that I, f I go to off the bat a lot of times is, can you tell me how many laws there are? Because most people can never answer this. And they and can't because... Because it's impossible, right? It's never There are ending. so many, you'll be count for the rest of your life. So yeah. this is their end run around to try to, you know, cage people into giving up. Now, right now... I have filed in federal court with uh, my attorney, Jonathan Mosley. Uh, we have filed in federal court to sue the Commonwealth of Virginia because I have not had my due process. And the brandishing laws here in Virginia are so vague. Just carrying a firearm holstered or slung could be considered brandishing. So we, we're suing the federal government to prevent us from being able to be convicted of a crime that is unenforceable to have the law stricken from law and it takes citizens to stand up and do these things because the fifth amendment is very clear i've never had my due process so how can the government restrict the rights that our creator endowed on us What's the rest of the threshold for you? So we just had our 4th of July, yes. right? And, and the Declaration of Independence and enumerated many of these offenses from, yes. the, from a king so far away. That's right. And an enumeration that it was just so invasive in their lives and their property and their own pursuit of happiness and liberty and property rights. Where would your threshold be for the federal government? that you would say, you know what, it is time for us to renew this conversation. Okay, that's, that's, a easy, that's kind of a, not a, quite an easy answer, but it's... It's, it's an, a question you there. haven't been asked a lot. In a while, yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, our enumerated powers, and under, under the uh, second amendment, grants the citizens, the militia, every one of us, we're all militia, to put down tyrannical government. But there's four, I was telling somebody about my four boxes of liberty earlier. Mm -hmm. And this is, what I, this is my belief in the four boxes of liberty. If you've never heard of them, you'll find this kind of entertaining. Your first box of liberty, that's your soapbox. That's when you're out there on the street putting your, telling people what you think. What we're doing right now on the, on the podcast. What I do every day on the radio when I'm hosting my radio program in Hopewell. What I do as a Republican Party chairman. When I'm out there on the streets doing voter registration, I'm putting, that's my soapbox. I'm out there with my message, right? That's the first box of liberty. The second box of liberty, that's the ballot box. 
That's where we're electing the people most like us, because we are not a democracy. People call us a democracy all the time, and that's not what we are. We are a representative republic where we elect our officials to represent us. They cast the ballots based off, and they govern by our consent. And our consent is the ballot box. Because we could unelect them as easy as we can elect them or replace them. So that's your second box of liberty, that ballot box. Because we will be governed by our consent, not their consent. And we have the right to take that consent back by the ballot. Your third box of liberty, when that fails, is the, uh, is the jury box. You take their ass into court. And you sue. And if you have a case, you will win. Trust me, I know. I've already won 13 cases in different levels of court to protect our liberties and principles. And when all else fails, you will always have the right under the Second Amendment to resort to the cartridge box. Oof. But then, right, you know, my cartridge. <laughs> <laughs> Although you got, you got baby bullets. My AR takes big bullets. <laughs> 762 rifle or 760 AR? by 39. Yeah. Right. <laughs> what do you think of the countries that have the AK on their flag? That's pretty impressive. Huh? It is. Well, look at the uh, the group in Texas. Uh, come and take it with the big ARs across the front of it. Right, they gotta have these uh, banners now on the highways that say "Stone California, my Texas." <laughs> yeah, uh, and I feel the same way about Virginia. And I think uh, yeah. for a long time, Virginia's been great, but you have a lot of these outside migration movements that's coming in here and just trying to change things. And they can't do it directly, and but they can do it through a weird migration movement and change, since that's the way our rules are, mm -hmm. right? And try to manipulate that. And and. The way we fix that, if you are a conservative and you're not registered to vote, you're dead wrong. If you are, yeah, but what about what about all the people that are registered to vote, but they're liberals, and so they're they're coming in and they're saying, you know, it's like one man one vote principle that's yes. hammered down our and throats. That's why I'm telling you, if you are a conservative and you are not registered to vote. And you don't go and take your, your brother, your sister, your mother, your father, your best friend, your neighbors, and get them conservatives with you to the polling booth. You're wrong. What if that's we are just to... asking the liberals, because they're going to outnumber us if we don't show up at the polls. What if they and just continue to outnumber you? What if, yeah, we do That's vote. what we're trying to do. Right, right. Get but registered, I'm, get registered, get your family I'm registered, saying, and go to the poll. I'm saying, yeah. what if that's not enough? What if they continue to come in? Where's the turning point on that? There are enough unregistered voters in Virginia. Conservatives. We can overturn anything they can put out right now. But we don't have the people registered. And the, and the ones who are don't go to the polling place and vote. Wasn't it that state that they had the Republicans uh, disappear from... Uh, Oregon. Oregon. Oregon, yeah. Oregon, yes. That's a great strategy, right? That was a great strategy. <laughs> right. That and it was most, illegal. It was very legal. The most base thing they could do, I'd imagine. <laughs> like here, I could imagine, like say, like even the Democrats we say that they did can control, but they need a certain number of people to vote to come in there. I would house a Republican come here to my house. Yeah. Uh, I would love for them to also say, "Bring bachelors <laughs> and plenty of uh, ammunition <laughs> and bullets." Yeah. Um, all government, all government meetings. And most business meetings and on all party meetings, is anybody familiar with the Robert's Rules of Order? Yeah. Yeah. What is that? The Robert's Rules of Order is a guideline that's been around for hundreds of years, and that dictates the parliamentarian of it, the, the way meetings run through uh, parliamentarian processes. So, part of the parliamentarian process, you've got to have what is called a quorum, and that's a certain percentage of the majority present of that organization to be able to conduct business. So when the Republicans left Iowa, or was it? Was Oregon. Iowa? Oregon. Oregon. Yeah. When they left Oregon, the Democrats did not have a quorum. And since all government business is regulated by Robert Rules of Order, a quorum could not be met. Therefore, they cannot do business. Therefore, they cannot have their gun control vote. Therefore, we use the parliamentarian process. I think it was a tax. It was a gas tax. Gas vote. tax. Yeah. That's what it was. 
and there was a bunch of farmers yes. and Farming. people that work for a living. So st- by them not showing up, all they did Captain is prevent a quorum yeah. from being formed. Uh, Therefore, that legislative body was unable so, to vote. But technically, I believe the Democrats in Oregon only needed two more. They needed to change over two of those elected officials to Democrats, and then they could just steamroll yes, them without then they, that. Exactly, because then they will have a quorum. Right. But since there's more Republicans than that number. Than required for the Democrats, the Democrats don't got enough required by themselves to be a quorum. The Republicans did what they did to prevent the quorum. And then the Democrats are just going to rewrite some districts lines and then get those guys out of office. Ron Paul, I remember, always would say that. I love Ron. Yeah, same. And he uh, he would always say that you know. Liberty isn't as popular as statism because it's so easy to just tell people, I'll give you $15 an hour or $16. And you just keep yeah. like bumping up the numbers that you're going to give free stuff. And so that's so much, that's so much easier than to tell people gives, we got to cut spending. The, and what gives yeah. the government the right to take your money and give it to somebody else? Uh, they'll just use our rules against us if they're flooded by other liberal migrants coming in here. They'll use the rules that are in place to say, yeah, it's a majority thing, mm-hmm. and they're just flooded. This is what um, many countries, and this is what, like, uh, the Russification of Ukraine, how mm-hmm. that occurred, how Turkey took over half of Cyprus. Yes. Uh, it's just an it, so interesting basi- tactic. Basically, what our government does, they use the force of losing your freedom, prison, to make you pay charity yeah. to somebody else. I should not have to be forced at the point of a gun, right? Right. Yeah. To give charity <laughs> to somebody <laughs> that I don't agree to that money going to. If I want to give my money to charity, I should be able to pick and choose my charity. I shouldn't have the government by the force of by the force of law by the color of law. The largest charitable group in this yeah. country is not the government; is actually uh, it's Christians. A ta- it's the taxpayer. Well, that's the, the taxpayer. It's a taxpayer. Yeah. Real, real charity. Right. Like, <laughs> that's forced charity. <laughs> yes. And, and that's why the income tax is wrong. And it should have never been put into our Constitution. But at the time, it, we had a liberal president. We had a liberal House. And we had a liberal Senate. And they amended the Constitution, and they got two-thirds of the state's legislators to ratify it, and they passed the income tax. I believe it's what, the what 21st Amendment? No, no, no way, no, no, no. I've, I've, come, I've, come, no I've come to a under, different understanding that there is no law that says you have to pay income tax. Oh, yeah, it's, it's None. actually in the Constitution now. No, no, no. no. I'll show you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> please, show me. I've, I've heard like um, people used to work as a tax collector. Because someone told him, like, find me the law. And he said, uh, yeah, there's definitely laws. I've been working for a long time. And he went around asking his supervisor and his boss. Like, I couldn't even find a law that says anything about income tax. 16th Amendment. I'll let you read it. Congress shall have power to lay and collect taxes on incomes. Uh, wow. What? From whatever sources derived without apportionment among several states and without regard to any census or enumeration. That's right. They're in the Constitution. And that was passed by... I thought, it, I thought it was supposed to be only tariffs that... Uh, or Excise tax is what it used or, to be. Is this tariffs commerce or something? In a different something. way? No. That's the Constitution. <laughs> it's funny how that part doesn't get reinterpreted or reimagined or, by the liberal justices. It's oh, only yeah. the parts that improve human liberty. See, right. I'm, a, I'm, I'm what it is considered constitutional conservative. I believe in the Constitution... Through and through, I raised my hand and I swore an oath to uphold and defend the Constitution. It's all enemies, foreign and domestic. I'm, I would lay down my life to this day to defend the Constitution of the people of the, of the United States. There's definitely a lot of domestic. I think that's mostly where the that's threat where is. to <laughs> freedom and liberty is here, not overseas in some desert in Iraq. Yeah. And I absolutely agree with that. Yeah. I tried I mean, to talk. I've been deployed yeah. five times to nations I probably should have never been in in the first place. Right. I've been blown up, literally. I think I've been the only uh, crushed. <laughs> but to this day, when I took that oath, that's the oath I'll take to my grave. Right, and I find uh, the Bill of Rights to be more of a, a negative rights, more of things that are enshrined, things that I really have the capacity to, the right to defend ourselves and bear arms. Unlike a lot of liberals who advocate for positive rights that other people must provide for you, 
like must provide health care, must provide fifteen dollars uh, an hour, and then don't pay your campaign staff fifteen dollars an hour, <laughs> like Bernie Sanders. Like and Bernie. Bernie, no, no, right. Bernie, Bernie's finally doing it now. He just had to cut hours. The cut hours, yeah, because <laughs> of course it's unaffordable. Yeah, <laughs> I saw, I heard that Elizabeth Warren was doing the same thing. Yeah, right. it's funny how it's but it's just they can't escape Hillary economic Clinton scarcity. Used uh, <laughs> like people volunteering hours. Um, what do they call it? interns and wouldn't pay them. Right. Free labor. Oh, yeah. The first 10 amendments to the Constitution, those are our inalienable rights guaranteed to us by the Constitution. Why do we have the first 10 amendments? Anybody know the reason why we got the first 10 amendments in the Constitution? Because they fucked up 10 times and forgot things? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, I thought the word amendment means after. It, it is. <laughs> but there's a, reason we, there's a reason we have the Bill of Rights. Does anybody know why we have the Bill of Rights in the Constitution? I think these are stuff that were enumerated in the state constitutions before the, they came together to agree on the nope. earlier one. No? We had a very famous Virginian by the name of Patrick Henry. I go to his mall all the time. <laughs> he was here in Richmond. Uh, where he remember his, said, "Give me right here in Richmond. Give right, me liberty. Yeah. Give me death." It's yeah. Most famous line. Yes, but his real well, his whole speech is much after, better. After the Articles of Confederation died, that's my favorite holiday. People celebrate the Constitution Day. I'm an Articles of Confederation guy. Yep. <laughs> so our founding fathers decided the Articles of Confederation did not work, and they were writing this Constitution. And a part of the Constitution was have to be ratified by two-thirds of the many states, 13 at the time. And Patrick Henry said, and a few other delegates said, no, Virginia will not ratify this unless we have A, B, C, D, E, F. And he started the Bill of Rights. And the Bill of Rights were added so the Constitution could be unanimously ratified by all 13 states hmm. and same thing with the uh, was it three-fifth rule right the three-fifth compromise yeah that was also added uh, wrote into the constitution specifically so the southern states would ratify the constitution because they wanted the constitution to be ratified unanimously so that's why we have the bill of rights hmm there's controversies about ratification i know that tom woods uh, guy, a libertarian guy I listen to a lot, uh, has talked about the way that the Constitution was presented to each of the states, and then yet later on, and Alexander Hamilton was instrumental in the Federalist Papers and yes. talking about it and selling yeah, it to the, the states. The Federalist Papers are a very good resource, so are the anti-Federalist Papers. Right. right. And then yet, afterwards, Hamilton and, and uh, among others, sets about to totally reinterpret yes. the Constitution and under, undermine it. And if people would actually read the Federalist Papers and the Anti-Federalist Papers, for those who don't know what that is, the Federalist Papers were the writings of our founding fathers explaining the Constitution in their own words to promote the Constitution's ratification. The Anti-Federalist Papers were those of our elected delegates at the Constitutional Convention of 1779 against ratification of the Constitution. Hmm. And because of the Anti-Federalist Papers, and mainly our man Patrick Henry was a anti-writing, is why we have the Constitution the way it is today. And it tells you, if you read those documents, it tells you exactly the mindset of the founding fathers of what they wrote in that Constitution. And it, they're, they're not long. You could probably read both both books in a matter of a day or two. I got a copy of each on my desk. But uh, hmm. it lets you know the thinking of what they were thinking when they penned the Constitution. And what they're going through. Yeah. And uh, we did a whole thing about the Declaration and trying to understand what they were going through and why they all have these grievances and that they enumerated against uh, the British Crown. Yes. Right. Um, and this is, I would say, like before uh, the presidencies. I mean, there's eight presidencies under the Article of Confederation, and this is before 
Uh, some of them, like we'll take account what happened then and leading up to this. There's just some interesting things that happens later on. Like you have like Aliens and Sedition Act. Yes. Right. You have like your uh, Whiskey Rebellion. Absolutely. Right. right. Um, trying to quell the most well, rebellious people don't parts. know about the Whiskey Rebellion. Right. Exactly. Right. <laughs> it's a little known fact of history. It's actually, if you get a chance to Google it and look into it, it's a pretty interesting story. That's going to be on my, uh, I'm creating a calendar of like awesome events throughout like Western history. And that's one of them. Yeah. Um, I think it's kind of important. Uh, that Philadelphians are kind of good and being, uh, I don't know, less controlled and very rebellious. And I think that's good, this kind of rebellious attitude. It's, it's in our motto. It's part of Virginian history. You have Patrick Henry doing it uh, right here at this church. Do you know the name, change, uh, the name of the church where he did it at? I do not remember, so I don't want to yeah, lie to you. No, yeah, um, but it's actually the same church where Edgar Allan Poe's mother is buried at as yes. well. Hmm. Uh, and it's not that far. I don't like that, the Edgar Allan Poe Museum. It's not Montpelier, right? Yeah. No, no. I'm it's, a uh, big Poe fan. Yeah. Yeah, yeah me too. Yeah. <laughs> like, right. why did they have to name uh, I love Arthur, Hill Hart. Arthur Boulevard? Yeah. Why they, couldn't they name uh, Poe's Boulevard yeah. or, or Patrick, agree. you know, of good Virginians? Uh, that, Although he was kind of weird, but. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But cousin. if you notice, most weird Americans are the best Americans. Yeah, yeah. It is weird. It's uncanny. I mean, probably what makes them so interesting is that they are a little, yeah, a little kooky, you know. Yeah. But he was off. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he so married what is? What was his cousin? She was like twelve years. Like old. twelve or thirteen. Thirteen. Yeah. yeah. Kind of weird. And his first cousin. Mm-hmm. Right. Keep it in the family, right? I think uh, <laughs> during that time, I don't know. I imagine women did live longer. I don't know. If, like, they were worrying about like living. Uh, I don't know if that was a problem or there was a health effect or anything like that. Um, but this is not like uh, some people who like say they marry when she's six years old and consummate when they're nine. That's a little weird. Well, I I can give you some uh, hillbilly jokes, but they're probably not too appropriate. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're wrapping. Like you know what a virgin in West Virginia is? What's that? Eight year old without runner brothers. <laughs> <laughs> so we're wrapping up here. Um, I want to ask um, why is then uh, the right to bear arms? important to you because the second protects the rest without the second the rest are meaningless and what do you think just as a closing note like i always hope that the people who saw us today kind of get it like oh wow that's cool now i don't feel as intimidated by somebody carrying a gun you know do you I get that people, sense i tell people any right has to be exercised freely without fear if you fear to exercise your rights you're asking the government to strip those rights from you. You cannot be fearful to carry it on and execute your God-given rights. If you do, you're just asking the government to take it from you. You cannot fear the man. There's nothing on this planet worth fearing. There's no man on this planet that I fear. There's no force on this planet that I fear. If my life ends, it ends. But I do will not fear the government. I will not fear man. I will exercise my rights freely without fear. And if we don't do that, that's why we get gun control. That's why we get limitations on your speech. That's why you get limitations on this and limitations on that. Because we are too afraid to stand up and exercise your rights without fear. Did I answer your question? Yes, sir. Thank you. <laughs> here, here. With that, Des Volt, stay liberated. And get off my property. <laughs> Hurrah. <laughs>